at Stony Creek Metro Park. I am one of the naturalists there. I am also a licensed wildlife rehabilitator and I take care of injured turtles. And I really like turtles and I'm hoping you do too because I thought we could meet some today. Um, first of all, I thought we could talk about what makes a turtle a turtle. And of course, I'm sure you know that turtles have shells. And what do they use their shells for? Well, they use them to hide. And kind of like that. <laughs> so this little guy, I promise I have real turtles, but this is my puppet turtle. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the turtle shell. Um, the turtle shell is made out of bone. The top part is called a carapace and the bottom part is called a plastron. And when I take care of turtles, many times it's because they were hit by a car crossing the road. And amazingly, turtles uh, end up with cracked shells and they don't look too, too good, but, but they can heal up pretty well. Um, so that's what I do. But at the Nature Center, I also talk about, I teach about turtles. So we talked a little bit about the turtle shell with the turtle puppet there. I have a real turtle shell here. This is from a large snapping turtle, though a snapping turtle can get a little bit larger than this. This shell was found out on a nature trail. And you can see the shell is made out of bone. And on the inside, you can see what the turtle would look like on the inside and why a turtle cannot climb out of its shell. So this part here is actually the turtle's backbone, which would protect the spine inside and if you can see these little lines that kind of go out like this on either side these are actually the turtle's ribs and the turtle's shell is actually made out of the turtle's ribs so that's kind of neat um, if you look at the top of the turtle shell this one's kind of peeling off here but these parts right here these dark brown parts are actually kind of like your fingernail so the fingernail coating would cover up on the turtle shell being extra protection and this is what kind of sheds and falls off as a turtle grows. So what else makes a turtle a turtle other than their shell? So turtles have scales, they are reptiles, all reptiles have scales such as lizards and snakes. Turtles are cold-blooded which means that they can't regulate their own body temperature like we can. When we get cold we get goosebumps, when we get warm we sweat and that helps us cool off. Well, a turtle can't do that on its own. A turtle relies on the sunshine to keep warm and it relies on the water to cool off. It doesn't get goosebumps and it doesn't sweat uh, like we do. So what else makes a turtle a turtle? Well, they lay eggs. And where do they lay eggs? Not in water, like a frog, but on land. And usually what they're doing is they're digging a hole with their strong back legs and their claws. And some turtles might lay 10 eggs, some turtles might lay up to 100 eggs. And these are just the turtles in Michigan. So here's an example of a turtle egg. I had a bunch of turtle eggs earlier in the summertime from some injured turtles I took care of that needed to lay eggs. And those have hatched into babies, so I have some babies to show you. But I don't have any eggs anymore. So this is my pretend egg. Their eggs are about the size of a ping pong ball. They're soft and squishy, unlike a bird's egg. So they usually hatch in a little bit over two months. So now I have some baby turtles that I've been keeping warm and feeding over the winter. And I'm just kind of waiting till it warms up a little bit more to let them go, probably around May. So if you'd like to meet some baby turtles, I've got some here. So here we have two baby turtles. You can kind of compare between the two of them. You probably recognize the snapping turtle right away by the bumpy shell. And the other turtle that's a little bit smaller is the painted turtle. Michigan is home to 10 different types of turtles. Some of them are really common, such as the painted turtle and the snapping turtle. Others are not as common, such as the spotted turtle and the wood turtle. Most of these live in water, and one of them lives mostly on land, but they all do need water and land.
Foggy? Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. I hope you enjoyed all of the turtle videos so far. I have one more turtle for you to meet here, and this one is actually my pet turtle, so it cannot be released back into the wild. It's called a red-eared slider, and you can probably guess why. He's showing off that red stripe on his head there, right where his ears would be. You can't see the ears, but they can still hear. He's also showing off his claws, which he's kind of scratching me with right now, but his long front claws tell me that he's a boy turtle. And these claws can be used for digging. They can be used for protection. They can be used kind of like your knife and your fork for eating. And he also uses them to tell his friend that he's not in the mood to play. So kind of like brothers and sisters that don't always get along, they can use their front claws and their front feet and they kind of tickle each other like this. They also have a very sharp mouth, but they don't have teeth, but that can also help them to eat. Before we go here today, I thought we could talk about ways that we could help turtles. And one of the ways that you could help turtles is that if you are thinking about getting a pet turtle, you might consider adopting a turtle. Nature centers receive many calls about red-eared sliders in need of new homes, and that's partly because they grow very large and they live for a very long time. And the nature centers just don't have room to keep all of them there. So if you were thinking about getting a pet, adopting a turtle might be one of the ways that you can help. And of course, leaving turtles in the wild and not keeping wild turtles as pets, because if all of us keep one as a pet, there wouldn't be any turtles left. Another way that we could help turtles is to help a turtle cross the road. So let me put him down. So I have my pretend snapping turtle here, and I thought we could talk about ways that we can help a turtle across the road. So first of all, why did the turtle cross the road? To get to the shell station, of course. No, I'm just kidding. So a lot of times turtles are crossing the road because they're actually looking for a place to lay their eggs. And oftentimes they are traveling far away from the water to find a safe place to lay their eggs. And even if they are heading towards homes or towards a farm or towards somewhere that doesn't look like where a turtle would go, they know where they're going. So it's always important to move them in the direction that they are going. Um, if we don't feel comfortable picking up a turtle to move it across the road or the road is just not safe, we can always try and keep a lookout for them and stopping our cars to give them time to cross is a big help as well. If it is safe for us to pick up the turtle, small turtles can be picked up kind of like a sandwich a larger turtle can be more intimidating, but I always pick up a snapping turtle kind of like way back here, which isn't the easiest way to pick them up, but it works and I don't have to worry about 
them biting me because their face is pointing away from me. So if I pick up back here, the only thing I have to worry about are these claws back here because they can scratch you up pretty good. So if you have gloves, that's best. Another way to pick up a large snapping turtle is actually to put your hand right here on the shell which doesn't seem like a good idea because it's right by their face, but they can't bite you this way. And if you put your arm or your hand underneath like this for support, you can carry them safely this way. And another thing that you can do if you don't feel comfortable picking them up with your hands, if you have a shovel, you can scoop them up. If you have a stick and they're, they'll bite onto that stick and you can pull the stick and drag them across the road. Another idea that I thought was pretty clever is that you can use your car floor mat and you can kind of scoop the turtle on top of there and then drag the carpet across the road. But one thing you never want to do, you never want to pick up a turtle by its tail. And that's because the tail here is connected to their spine, as we kind of learned earlier. And if you pick up a turtle by its tail, this can hurt the turtle. But I hope that you enjoyed all the videos. And if you're looking for a fun activity and you have some pie pans at home, you can paint those and make a turtle costume. If you go outside, you might be able to find a rock and you could paint that rock like a turtle. And otherwise, I hope that everyone has a chance to get outside and enjoy the Metro Parks. And as it warms up, maybe you'll even see some turtles on your walk outside. Thanks for watching.